We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's, tonight's question comes from longtime fan of the show, Nate Parker, who wrote, question for the bellhop. Do you know of any RPG map making websites or tools, ideally free, that mm. can allow the user to create and or generate both city and country maps? Primarily needs to be maps the user can create. Well, thanks for the question, Nate. Uh, first off, I have to start by saying, what a world we live in now that this is a thing. Like, let me put on my grognard net beard and say, back in my day, if you wanted a map, you had to go out and buy a module or sit down with graph paper and draw it yourself. Well, to be fair, while a few DMs were masterful, masterful artists, and many somehow always ended up drawing something vaguely phallic, <laughs> it got the point across, and we, as players, understood enough to describe our positions or place minis or figure out which way to turn in the dungeon. Now let me take the props off and say, and it sucked. Sure, when I first got into fantasy gaming, I had fun drawing maps. Everyone did, right? Especially I was in grade school and high school, right? Doodling. I used up my fair share of graph paper. Even trying the whole isometric thing, right? You get the funky diagonal, the, the diamond graph paper to try to do 3D stuff. And then even the, I even tried those weird triangle shaped maps for making worlds that like made D20s or something if you put them together. And it was always fun at first, but then I found they got boring quickly. Plus, I was spending more time making maps and dungeons than I was playing in them. I, and then there's the very common occurrence where maps, entire maps, or at least large portions of them, wouldn't even get used. There's nothing like prepping an entire portion of an adventure that doesn't get used. Mm -hmm. It's something that every DM runs into. It's one thing if you've prepped some stat blocks and ideas for a part of a dungeon. It's a whole other thing if you've yeah. spent hours carefully rendering it in fine detail. Especially if you like to draw in all the rooms and the barrels and the planks and scenery as well. Now, I know there are people out there that still love hand drawing maps. One of my favorite people on the planet, fellow Canadian Dice and Logos, draws awesome hand drawn maps for a living. I actually watch him live stream three times a week because he also puts on awesome industrial music. So I have him on while I'm working throughout the day now. And I give full props to anyone who actually enjoys the mapping hobby. All the power to you, and thank you for putting out maps for those of us without the skill or patience to make our own. And there are way less unintentional fallacies this way. Remind me in the after show that comment and Dyson logos for a reason. <laughs> now, there was a point back in the early 90s, uh, specifically 1992, when TSR released the AD&D 2nd Edition Core Rules CD. That had copies of all the two-week core books, though not like PDFs. You couldn't flip through them. Just all the rules were there using some kind of 1990s, early 90s um, SQL software or something. Paper card. Where, yeah, it's something. <laughs> I, I don't know what it used, but like you couldn't read the book from cover to cover, but like you could look up the rules for things. And it had rules for making characters and encounters. No, no, it wasn't new in 4E. I heard way too many people complaining about 4E using digital tools, and I've been using them since second edition. Now, with that package also came a copy of Pro Fantasy Software, which had three different separate programs, Campaign Cartographer, City Designer, and Dungeon Designer. These were for drawing maps. This is actually the first piece of software that I know of that brought mapping to the masses. Now, the problem was, this is literally CAD software. It was vector graphics. It was not easy to use. The, the learning curve was steep to insurmountable. Most people like me gave up on it. Though again, some people did embrace it and actually went on to start publishing maps and professionally using it. And many of the RPG publishers at the time were using this software. Yeah, now CAD software for maps or anything else is absolutely a skill. And mm -hmm. often, one doesn't want to have to learn just to play a game. Now, thankfully, things have continued to advance from there. Today, we have a rather large number of mapping software options, and lucky for Nate, many of them are free, or at least offer free versions with the option to pay more for upgrades or premium versions or downloadable art packs or whatever. I've got to say, these tools are quite amazing most of which allow you to make maps we would have only dreamed of back in the day. Like back when I was running maps, like even the best looking module maps look 
like garbage compared to what you can make in seconds with some of the software. Maps created with these free tools actually rival some of the best professional work out there to some artist's chagrin. And this list won't even take into consideration your basic graphics programs mm -hmm. or things like Photoshop that you might already have, which with often free brushes and templates, yep. you can generate Tolkien-esque maps, maybe not with ease, but far easier than drawing all those trees and mountain ranges yes. in by hand. And to be honest, I don't have it on the list tonight, but there is specifically a site for mapping with GIMP and telling you how to do it your own. Now, I didn't include that on the list because to me, that was like, you got to learn GIMP and then you got to do that. So now before we do get on to our list of tools, I do want to point out that Nate's question and then most of these tools are designed for role players. They're, they're, they're made for role playing game use, but there's no reason you couldn't find uses for these for board games. These could be great for prototyping. If you are a game designer and you need a board for your new coin-like game featuring birds, this would be a great way to design that board. Or a map to be used during your game. War games, like you can do hexes everywhere. Hex maps, you could even use something like campaign cartographer or hexographer to make Gloomhaven scenarios. That's not out of the question. So, well primarily designed for rpgs i can see people finding use in these that aren't role players and now on to our list of map making tool suggestions now one thing i did do is i took some liberty with nate's question because i think people out there are going to care about it what i did include on this list are random generators now nate specifically asked he wanted user created maps and user control but i also included some random generators and i will call that out when it happens just because i think that's going to be more used to people other than just nate though most of the random generators are actually done well enough that you can combine them and kind of tweak them so there is some user input now the first piece of software i want to mention tonight is the one i already mentioned pro fantasy software's suite of mapping tools that was around in the 1990s and is still around now now, the most popular is Campaign Cartographer, which is on Campaign Cartographer version 3, and it's come a long way from its origins. They also have new versions of City Designer and Dungeon Designer, also somehow on version 3, but they've added to this a ton of new tools, like Character Artist, Cosmographer, or Cosmo Cosmographer? Cosmographer. Cosmographer, that's, the word. that's how I was trying to pronounce it. Fantasy Floor Plans. A piece of software just called Modern, Fractal Terrains, and more. Now, of all the tools, they've spent the most time on Campaign Cartographer. They know that this is their flagship. And this is the most recommended software for designing overland maps for games. It's the one that gets recommended the most. And the one I see the most credits going to in published modules. Now, the big problem here is two things. There's the fact that it's CAD, right? It's We kind of mentioned that, but also it costs money. It always has, and I expect it always will. Now, since COVID started, they have put all of it on sale for half price. Basically, you know, since you're stuck at home, and until uh, further notice, everything is half off. But buying the entire suite of software costs $620 US. That's with the half off sale. And then each additional piece of software costs separately. If you don't buy this bulk, you buy campaign cartographer, it costs this much. You want dungeons, you got to buy another thing. You want taverns, you need another thing. And then there's add-ons for all of these, including annual add-ons they put out with new assets and everything. And yes, you get it all with the $620, but like Nate's looking for cheap. So even if you just want campaign cartographer, if you want to do a frozen tundra, you might need some kind of add-on. Note that's I didn't confirm that. So pro fantasy is not cheap. But it is a tried and true, fully developed suite of tools that is actually used by the gaming industry. This is the software used to create many of the maps and the books you know and love. Now, one nice thing I will say about Dungeon Designer and the Pro Fantasy software is that while, yes, $620 for a suite of software is expensive mm -hmm. compared to what is happening with many pieces of software now with a subscription model, uh -huh. over time, this purchase model is definitely going to save you money. Yep. Uh, so if you are looking and willing to put a down, put out an investment up front, which is, again, it's a steep investment. Mm -hmm. There's no question there. Uh, 
you're not paying recurring fees over right. and over again for life like you would be by buying Photoshop. Yep. And that was the Pro Fantasy series of mapping tools. All right, my next suggestion is probably my strongest suggestion of the night. I probably should have put this at the end of the list because it's going to be anticlimactic after this in a way. And that is incarnate. It's spelled ink, I-N-K-A-R-N-A-T-E, incarnate. This is, to me, the opposite end of the pro fantasy software as far as user experience is concerned. It is so much simpler in ease and use, like just to, to learn it. Drawing with incarnate, isn't like learning CAD. It's more like using a paint program. It's more like using Photoshop. Now it comes with a ton of built-in icons and brushes and stamps, and you literally just point and click to draw them on your maps. Now, Incarnate is perfect for what Nate's looking for. It's designed to create all the map types you should need. You can do world maps, region maps, city maps, village maps, battle maps with grids or hexes, and interior maps. Now, this is the tool that most modern mappers use. If you go through drive through RPG and start looking at the 5e supplemental material you can buy, almost everyone's using Incarnate now. Now, there is a free version of Incarnate that you can play around with. It is limited, and you'll be tempted to upgrade if you do check this out. What's really impressive, and I have no idea if Nate's looking for this, the fact he's looking for free is probably not, but I thought it's worth mentioning, is they do also offer a commercial license. So if you plan on creating your maps to sell them, either as maps standalone or use them in modules or something else, this is a great option for people that want to sell maps and adventures and third-party products. Now, the one other bonus of Incarnate is that it is 100% online. It is an online tool, so there's no software to download. This means you can use it on various devices. So you can download it on Apple, you can download it on, on uh, your Android, you can download it in Windows, and everything's saved in the cloud. So you can then use multiple different devices to access it, which is really cool. Now, of course, the downfall being this is in the cloud and the same problem we've talked about with app-based games. If Incarnate ever goes out of business or decides to shut things down, you might be in trouble. Now, I think Incarnate is, at this point, looking pretty stable. Yes. Uh, now, they are a subscription-based, because they are online, it is subscription-based. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say, for what you get, the fees are incredibly reasonable. $25 a year or $5 a that month. Is, that's like nothing. Uh, and, the like... Difference, and the difference between the free and the paid is significant. So with the free, yeah. you get 700 uh, different things to use and, and play with, uh, which will get you a, a great little you know experiment. Uh, and you can export at 2,000 pixels uh, mm -hmm. for personal use only uh, for up to 10 maps. Now, as soon as you go to $25 a year, you get not 700, but 14,000 assets mm -hmm. with 8K resolution images. And the moment you pay them a dime, anything you've created under a pro account is resellable. So it's, okay. you, it's not a separate commercial license. If you are paying the money, anything okay. you generate can be sold. And so that's that's pretty impressive. And I got to say the maps look good. Like, like they, they don't look old school. They look new, modern, colorful, lighting, all kinds of special effects. I, it, it's impressive software. Yeah, the, the interior uh, lighting effects that are, that are generated yeah. look really impressive. So uh, that is incarnate or ink arnate yeah, incarnate next i've got something that takes even less work and that are the is the, the the various map making tools at don john i swear we mentioned don john before in a previous episode i might have been a sunday brunch but if you're an rpg gamer and you haven't been to don john that's d-o-n-j-o-n -O which is why i'm saying it weird it's not dungeon it's don john you have to go bookmark that site right now it's donjon.bin.sh I don't know why it's got the weird URL, but that's what it is. Go bookmark that right now. Very, very site, Unix URL. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah. And we'll, we'll drop a link in the show notes too. So for people can get it, I just tossed a link into our chat room for the awesome people who've joined us here live. So you got you to bookmark the site. This is a site filled to the brim with free RPG tools of all kinds for all kinds of different systems and settings, fantasy to sci-fi. Now, one of the coolest features on Donjon is its random map makers. There's a random world generator, random town generator, treasure map generator, and of course, a random dungeon generator. 
while it doesn't make the prettiest of maps, they're very functional and you can change all kinds of settings to get a map that should be perfect for your game or what you need at the time. This site is all about functionality and not looks. So it's perfect for a home game or for inspiration, but I wouldn't suggest using this if you were someone looking to publish your work. And I actually have a feeling you probably can't use their stuff for free. I didn't dig into that. Personally, I think this is a great site to use during prep to come up with ideas and brainstorming, give you ideas, or to come up with something on a fly when your players go off the expected path and they decide to investigate a cave that you just came up with off the top of your head. You can go here and quickly randomly generate a cave system or you can quickly generate the town they're visiting or you know there's a combat on a ship that didn't go well and they need repairs and they pull into the closest port here's a great way to generate that port on the fly yeah interestingly don john does in C, uh use uh, the ogl for some content but i think uh because of the the various tools involved mm. you would need to be careful depending on what you're using uh the one thing i do notice is while they have a ton of fantasy options uh and they have one sign or one set of science fiction options they don't actually have anything modern interesting. um which is interesting uh, i guess people just generally use modern maps and i, I was gonna for, say do you really need a mapping tool for most modern games you know what personally i don't like using existing cities i like creating right. my own city um so I, I would i would like a uh, a modern city uh, map maker but uh again if you're looking for fantasy or again science fiction uh and also with different rule sets so whether you're looking yep. at generic fantasy ad and d 2e d20 micro light pathfinder 4e 5e they're all there specifically to that rule set when they're generating things yep so that's a big benefit and that is donjon.bin.sh now my next piece Whoop, I jumped one, sorry. That leads me to Dungeon Scrawl. This is the software that makes Dice and Logos crack. The reason for this is this is a click and draw software where basically you get a grid, you click your mouse and start drawing rooms. Like it's that simple. It makes it look like it's drawn by hand, like professional cartographers. It has the hand-drawn look and the hand-drawn hatching. And honestly, since this has come out, I know Dyson has gotten attacked regularly online by people claiming he just uses Dungeon Scroll. The thing is, it's that good. It is that easy to make great looking maps with Dungeon Scroll. Now it features a variety of brushes. You even get layers. It lets you import assets to add features to your dungeon. So you can even do your own monster icons and dungeon dressing. Now one limited one, one problem with the software, if you can call it that, is it really is called Dungeon Scrawl for a reason. Yes, there is a way to do indoor maps in cities. They're so-so. Uh, it's really designed for dungeons. And there is no way to do overland or regional maps, which is something Nate was looking for. But like this site is way too much fun just to play with. I, I wasted way too much time when doing research for this episode, just clicking around and editing hexagonal rooms and trying out the different filters and stuff on Dungeon Scrawl. You want dead simple. I, there's nothing even to learn. Just go play with it and you'll figure it out in seconds. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is a, a fantastic tool for that classic dungeon look. Yeah. Um, there, there, are some, uh, there are some licensing things you need to take account. I'm not going to go into those, but uh, they, they do have a licensing session uh, section. So do read through depending on how you want to use things. But uh, absolutely, Dungeons Crawl or DungeonScrawl.com is a fantastic resource for all your dungeoning needs. And just to clarify, every single one of these, you're free to use for home use. If you're just playing your own game with your own group, there's no licensing to worry about. We're just mentioning it for people because we do know there's content creators out there that sell maps and dungeons and PDFs of our Well, and also stuff. you do ne possibly need to be careful if you are putting things out on, on World Anvil yes. uh, for public consumption, even if it, you're not officially publishing it. If you're mm -hmm. putting it out there for public consumption, you may run into issues. But again, yes, in your home game, yes. this is fine. The other thing, too, is if you are streaming or using a virtual tabletop online, licensing is a thing. Yep. You are not necessarily free to grab any map you want to use in your live stream, which is the other reason we mentioned it. All right, next piece of map making and software is not for me at all, but I can see some people digging it. This is uh, the, the site is called Deep Night Games, 
And their piece of software is really simple. It's just called RPG Map Editor 2. This free software is for designing JRPG-style top-down maps. Uh, one of the things these people are obviously proud of with this software is adding lighting to your maps because all of the sample maps are very glowing. There's lots of different colored lights. And while the maps look nice and colorful, they just have that angular wall thing because they have the JRPG, right? So you either have a straight corner or you have a diagonal corner and that's it. And that said, they look great for the style they're going for. Like they, they look good. If that's the look you want, all the power to you. One of the things that is an advantage to this is everything you make in this is free to use, even for commercial use. And then someone else pointed out to me that this integrates with some of the virtual tabletops directly. And some of the random map generators we're going to mention later can be tied into this so that they can create a better looking map from one of the not so pretty dungeon generators. So the integration with other software is actually up there on this one. Yeah, and this one is, it's on its uh, second major version uh, with 16 updates to this version. It is capable of running HTML5 in the browser, or they do have a Windows download available from their website or from Itch.io. So fantastic, again, again, it's very stylized, uh, but if that's the look you're going for, it's pretty tough to beat. And while well, the price is pay what you want, including free. That was, uh, sorry, the Deep Map Editor, or the RPG Map Editor 2 from deepnight.net. Next, I got one I don't have a lot of information on. It's called the RPG Battle Map Maker. This is at mapper-rpg.com. Now, this is pretty basic, but functional top-down map maker meant to be for battle maps with a grid on them. This is, you're going to put put it on a virtual tabletop, put it on your, you know, screen that you now have set into your gaming table for putting miniatures on or print out um, your big battle maps. It features um, layers and various art assets that you literally just drag and drop, right? You click on the bushes, you put the bushes out, you click around. Now, the art is functional, but not great looking. It, it's uh, uh, the maps they even show just seem repetitive to me. Like they show a jungle scene with a wreck boat and, and they've got a video you can watch to see how they, how to use it. And they're just not enough tree types. Now, the impressive part though, is you can import your own graphics. So it seems like if you wanted to spend the time to import a bunch of your own graphics, it's a real simple tool. And I learned, and I didn't realize this when I wrote the notes for this, as I got deeper into my research, they call these tile mappers, where you're basically selecting tiles of different art assets and putting on the map. So this is a tile map maker for making overland, like over the top down battle maps. The best part here, of course, 100% free. Uh, so it, it's 100% three for three maps. Uh, uh, they do have a premium user uh, after seven days uh, of, of free use at premium. You then get uh, $4.99 per month. Mm. Um, to me, it's it's interesting. I'm The style feels very dated to me. Yeah. Um, there is a advanced version of Microsoft Paint feel to it. Um, and it's not, I mean, we're not talking the basic Microsoft paint. Yeah, meme, the graphics meme maker. are better. It's but... not mean, it's not meme maker paint level, but again, it's, it's basic, uh, very, very basic. And again, repetitive because it is a tile based system, yeah. uh, useful, but, uh, definitely not something you're probably going to be publishing anything on, but again, no. that's not necessarily what you're looking for. Yep. Uh, but again, it is only three maps for free. So. All right, I totally missed that. I just saw that there was a free version. So yeah, three maps isn't a lot, though I'm pretty sure you could go in incognito mode and do three more maps. And, then... and that is mapper.rpg.com, one P in mapper, not two. Oh, interesting. All right, that leads me to another mapper with the proper number of Ps. We've got Dave's Mapper, Dave's M-A-P-P-E-R. There's another random map generator that's inspired by hand-drawn maps. This one's weird. Like I, Sean's bringing it up, he's probably gonna like start when he sees it because it's so weird. What's really impressive here is the number of different styles that are featured from actual RPG mappers, actual hand-drawn maps from actual people who have given Dave permission to use them. Once you pick a type of map, so you got dungeon, cavern, village, side view, dungeon, etc. There's a ton of options. It generates a map from geomorphs created by some of the best known mappers in the world. Yes, Dyson Logos is here. You actually get Dyson's maps. 
Well, I got to say, it's very interesting to see a map made up of all kinds of different styles. You're probably going to want to limit it to just one mapper or a small selection of mappers if you're trying to do something that looks good. But if all you want is a functional random map, Dave's Mapper has got you covered. 100% free, ability to export the maps. This is a great way to get a quick map. And I got to say, it's just fun to browse through all the different artist styles on this site. Yeah, no, there's there's some really fantastic stuff here. Uh, it'll you'll you'll play for a while before you ever generate anything you're actually gonna want. But <laughs> once you've played for a while and 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 figured some things out, I think it's something you can really enjoy. And the fact that you are literally using something from professional mappers yep. uh, is a great uh, a great tool. And that is Dave'sMapper.com. Next, we get to the Tiamat tile mapper so this is this is where i learned that you call these tile mappers and when i googled tile mapper i saw that's what you call this um this works like all the other like click on a thing and then click on the map to place it at the bottom of the screen are a bunch of pre-made rooms and corridors you click on those click them where you want to go attach them how you want this is made by Skeleton Key Games, who actually produces and sells dungeon maps and drive through RPG. So what they've done is taken sections of their own maps for the tiles. Now, the biggest problem I had with this site is probably one not everyone's going to have, but the image, the, the tiles are, are saved as images, JPEG specifically. And I have a Pinterest plugin that every time it sees an image wants me to save it to Pinterest. And I was having a bear of a time trying to click on these, trying to save them to print to Pinterest. And yes, I know it's me. And yes, I know I can turn the plugin off. I actually had to, to even be able to use this site. Um, this one's simple. This is this is very easy to use and very basic with very basic squarish round rooms and pretty simple corridors and your usual crosses. And there are no furnishings or decor for the dungeons you, you make, just corridors and rooms. Now it does have the ability that if you get like the premium version, you can start uploading your own graphics and I'm assuming you can probably get to a bigger database. I probably wouldn't recommend this one strongly, but if you do just really quickly, I could see like being in a virtual tabletop and someone opening a door you didn't expect, like a, whatever, they teleported 30 feet to the left and you're like, oh, what's over there? And you just need to throw around a, a quick something to show on your VT, your um, what a D20 or whatever you want to show on your virtual tabletop. I could see using it for that. I can't see using this to design all your maps. So the main reason I can see people not using this is because of their microtransaction system. So while it is always free to create all of your maps, to get a map out once you have created it costs huh. money. So you pay for exporting your maps uh, either $2 for a single map, or you can buy bundles. So you can export three maps for $4 or so on and so forth. Oh. And it's all microtransaction driven. Um, I'm questionable about this. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with the art. Again, it's, it's a tile-based system. You know what you're getting. Uh, they've got a, a specific style that they go for which is very, you know, OSR sort of, sort of feeling. But uh, if you don't like microtransactions, this is definitely not the site for you. Otherwise, if you are interested, this is at rpgobjects.com slash Tiamat. Next up, I have Dungeon Painter. This free-to-use map-making software makes maps that look like they're created in Pro Fantasy software. Like it really does. Like I almost wonder if they just like somehow imported the assets. Uh, this is another basic drag and drop, right? Click on the thing, click on the map to have it show up. Um, it does have virtual tabletop integration. So this gets recommended a lot. Every forum I saw where people are like, what map making software do you use to run your games on Roll20? Or like, check out Dungeon Painter. What do you use to run your games on Tabletop Simulator? Check out Dungeon Painter. So this one looks interesting. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting is you could buy it on Steam. This is the first one that, like, this isn't web-based. You have to buy it and download it. Um, this looks to be a full-service mapping suite that offers all the basics, while not being CAD-based like the actual Pro Fantasy software. So this one is a little interesting. Uh, the reason it's not online anymore is because yeah. it is a Flash-based software. Mm -hmm. So the, Steam, the standalone Steam app is a standalone uh 
you know compiled version of of the flash app and whatever the whatever they're compiling flash in these days from adobe uh, mm. There is, however, a beta of Dungeon Painter Studio 2 out now. Uh, I would personally, based on what I'm seeing from the website, hold off and not purchase Dungeon Painter Studio and wait for Dungeon Painter Studio 2 to become available since they will have finally thrown away their, their Flash roots and yep. the, uh, the problems that come with Flash in the modern age. Uh, that being said... Uh, they are going to be uh, generating a lot of different things for multiple top uh, popular virtual tabletops mm -hmm. in the new system. So you won't just be limited to a tabletop simulator, but you will be able to uh, involve, work with other virtual tabletops as well. So what I could not find anywhere is this was on multiple free lists. I could not find a free version. And I'm wondering if that's just... The old Adobe version, the Flash version was free. Yeah, so originally no the online version, what, when, when Flash wasn't banned, uh, it was free online, ah, but that so has since uh, gone away, and I guess people just haven't uploaded, updated, haven't updated their, their lists their since yeah. Flash disappeared. So uh, I probably shouldn't even have this one on the list, but I couldn't confirm that myself. So currently, you can uh, get it on Steam, that is Dungeon Painter Studio, or you can go to pyromancers.com, and check out the Dungeon Painter Studio 2 beta. All right. Speaking of basic, easy to use ones, this is a really simple one called GM Friend. This is the most basic software I found while researching this topic. It lets you do hex maps and dungeon maps with only the most basic of icons. Super simple to use. There's a hex map. It automatically gen generates one. There's different graphics you could throw in and click and put them in. Now, I wouldn't recommend this as something to use before your game. Like, I wouldn't use this to map out my whole dungeon and all my cities. But if you need a really quick overland for your Roll20 game, or you're running something online, or even at a table, and you're like, oh, I need a quick hex map to show this because, again, someone cast a teleport spell, or you, they, they decided to put a um, bag of holding inside Lehman's tiny hut, and things went poof, and you want to send them to Bagland, use something like this. Like it just, the, the simplicity of this one is almost striking that it's like, you're going to make a map in seconds. Yeah. This one is a uh, very, you know, eight bit roguelike hex map sort of thing. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, yeah, for a quick Insta map, this one is the way to do it. Cause again, you're not going to build a map faster pretty much in any other software no. uh, or at least a hex map in any software compared to this. And this is GM friend at, rhythmmakesthings.com slash gm underscore friend. Now for something with just a little more flash, but still really basic, check out Hextml or HexTML. This is a very basic hex painter that has the big advantage of allowing you to import your own graphics. This is about as easy to use as GM friend. It's, it's the maps are functional, but not fancy. Again, I think this would be great for generating maps on your, on the fly. So if you spend enough time importing some really good looking hex graph graphics, it could probably make some really impressive looking maps if you're willing to do that extra work. Yeah, this one's sort of the next step up. It's got a, uh, even even in the basic form without uploading anything, it's got a better set of graphics mm. available to go through. You can, you're not just doing trees and, and grass and mountains, but you can also get swamps and other things. Uh, yeah. They're clearly versioning it. They do have a Patreon that, that, to support them. And this is available, uh, this is HextML, HextML at HextML.playtest.net. Now for something just as quick as easy, but for dungeons and not hex maps, I suggest Dungeon Doodler. The name itself kind of gives you an idea. If you give it the size of your map, how many feet per square, and tell it to go, and then just start doodling like a paint program. There's some nice added bonuses here, like the ability to add hatching in various styles, including your traditional dice and logo style hatching, but you can actually like do outer space and water hatching for different styles of maps. Interestingly, you can't mesh the different types of hatching. So you can have like hatching and water on the same map. Again, it's a really simple tool. For dead simple, the stuff you make here looks pretty good. There's also a stamp tool where you can actually import graphics. So again, if you want to take the time to import a bunch of graphics, you can do things like fill the rooms with beds and barrels and whatever. This one I think is worth checking out and playing around with. It's, it's, it's really simple, but I think there's a lot of power here if you take the time to customize it to your own stuff. 
and this is Dungeon Map Doodler, not Dungeon, not Dungeon Doodler, Dungeon Map Doodler. Oh, com. Now, sticking with random generators, I have What About? W A T A B O U, What About? Uh, this is a free online site for generating village and city maps. The neat bit here is that it generates everything randomly it names your town it names various districts as well as giving you the top down map you can also change all that you can click on it you can change the names and you can change the district types i also dig that it zoomed out a bit so it's not just the buildings you also get some farmland and you'll see like a lighthouse off in the distance and stuff like that i dig this one a lot it, i like the look of the maps it generates this is one i could see both using during prep and world building as well as having to generate that city or village on the fly and this actually there's actually a lot more here if you if you jump back one level and just go to what or what about.h.io they have the city generator a mansion generator a one-page oh, nice. dungeon generator and interestingly they actually have a uh and a village generator sorry and they have a 3D viewer for oh, their cool. city, for their uh, fantasy city and village generators. So once you've built the 2D layer of your fantasy city or your village, you can pop that into one of their other apps and see the 3D version of that city for a little more uh, fun. And Again, that, I think this one is 100% free. I didn't see any charges. Uh, I think they do have a Patreon you can support. Yep, but... no, absolutely. You're supportable, but... Uh, that is what about or what about w a t a b o u dot itch dot i o. Now one more random map generation site is Gozzy or Gozzy g o z z y dot com. This again lets you put in parameters, then generate random things like dungeon maps, city maps, or sorry, cave maps or wilderness maps. There are lots of options here to pick from, but again, this only gives the basic outline. There's no features. There's not even doors presented on these maps. Um, not my strongest recommendation, but really quick. Like if you just really need a, a spot right now and you don't want to draw it yourself, this is a good way to get quick on the fly dungeon cave and wilderness maps. And just to uh, clarify, it is G-O-Z-Z-Y-S, Gaziz.com. With uh, yeah, the random dungeon map generator, random cave map creator, random wilderness map creator, and uh, some ready-made maps already there to uh, make use of. Oh, again, not fleshed out, no no room names, just real basic walls. That's yep. about it. <laughs> now, my last random generator is the fantasy map generator. This thing blew me away. This is for creating an entire setting an entire world or region like like the your your whole game setting could be here including countries principalities municipalities and so on when you generate your first map here you get this very zoomed out view all color coded already named and you can zoom all the way in and see the rivers the cities the roads the paths it gets even more impressive when you realize you can click on all these things and they all have names and list like culture types and population features and everything. Every town has a unique coat of arms and every country has a coat of arms, all randomly generated. The more I played with this, the more I discovered that was there. And all of these are sliders you can change. So if you want to adjust it so that that's a bigger kingdom, you can do that. And if you want to change it so that these people are despots, you can change that. You can change sections of the map. I, you could spend hours exploring this fantasy world that just showed up in front of you that doesn't exist and no one's ever used before. This is a really impressive tool. Like I honestly think like a lot of people talk about play microscope to, to, to set up your system. Like play microscope, but run this first so that you just get an overview. Here's the land and you like need a city. You can click on a city and get all the details. This thing is impressive. Yeah, I know there's that. This is fantastic. This is the sort of thing where you go to it and you get the same uh, shocking realization as when you go to this is not a person dot com and you see these, um, you know, that this AI has created a person that doesn't actually exist. This yeah. is that. But for maps, um, there's so much interest there. Like at first you think, oh, look, they made a they made a pretty map and they threw some yeah. names in it. And then you click on the little button up top and you see, oh, that was just the political map. I want to mm -hmm. see the places of interest or the religions or the height map or just the landmass. It's, it's all there. It has yes. generated everything there for you. 
Uh, and, and it's just up for you to be able to uh, explore. And it's done it in 2D and 3D. Yep. Like I said, this one blew me away. It, it's it's blew really, me away. really shocking um, what what they've done there. So you that can is even, like filter by shops. Yeah. And it even figured out what shops are in what cities. I was like, oh, my gosh. And that is the fantasy map generator at Asgare, A-Z-G-A-A-R dot GitHub dot I-O. All right, sticking with high level overland style maps. This is for Nate because he wants to make his own. He doesn't need no fantasy map generator to give him a fully fleshed out world. He should head to Map Gen 4. This is a paint style. So again, you're just painting with brushes, region map maker for doing overland maps, but like region, high zoomed out. These aren't battle maps. We're looking at level above. This one you do have to download to use, but everything you make with it is yours to do with as you like, including selling it, streaming it. Now, this one I didn't have time to actually download and check it out, but I got to say the sample maps they show, the video for how to use it looks really simple to use and makes rather good looking colorful maps, way better than anything we had in the 90s. Absolutely. And interestingly, this is an open source project available on GitHub. So if you happen to be a software developer, you can even jump in and help continue nice. the development of Map Gen 4 from Red Blob Games. Now, jumping back to full map making studios for generating great looking maps, I have one of the most impressive ones called Dungeon Fog. Now, the website is dungeonfog.com, but it's spelled, the software is spelled D N G Fog for whatever reason. Now, this is the first piece of software from Project Deos or Dios. I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to pronounce that which is a big deal, right? This is, this is supposed to be the next step. This is supposed to be the incarnate killer. This is a planned suite of mapping tools that was funded on Kickstarter and is currently in alpha. And you can check out the full suite if you're a backer, but you had to have been a Kickstarter backer for access to the alpha. So far, the only piece they've released to the public is this dungeon fog, which is for doing battle maps. Again, you're not dungeon level. You're looking at your grids. You're part of a map that I got to say look gorgeous, like really nice looking, professional quality dungeon map. Now, where this beats out some of the other stuff is we are going back to vector-based click and drop graphics. The fact it's vector-based means you get to scroll in and out with any problems. The art assets are fantastic looking. Uh, the sample maps look great. Now, I have to admit, I didn't play around with this one because you had to create an account to be able to sign in to try it. And I just didn't have the time to do that. So I can't tell you how well it actually works but they did a really good job on their videos and selling it. And based on how nice this looks, I am really looking forward to keeping track of Project EOS because if this is step one, wait till they get to their overland maps and their dungeon generators and everything else. Yeah, no, there's a wild range of things there. Uh, there are three levels of accounts uh, of three where you get 12 maps and a bunch of different, you know, all the assets and a bunch of different things and some, some watermarking and things like that. Um, and no credit card required. Then you can upgrade to a premium, which has additional uh, templates and color grading and all sorts of, uh, and unlimited maps. Uh, and then if you are looking to sell, if you are looking for that commercial license, they do have the professional, mm -hmm. but that's the actually the only reason you need to go to that third level. Uh, really, it's just basically two levels for most people, free mm -hmm. and premium. And interestingly, they are partnered with uh, World Anvil. Uh, yep. And also Kaora and uh, Great GM. So uh, if you are already a World Anvil fa uh, fan, I'm not sure if there's any financial connection between them. I think there is. But, I think uh, this is World Anvil software. Interesting. What I, I understand. I, as a as a paid member of World Anvil, I might have to check this out. There you go. <laughs> so so World Anvil had this all over their site. Interesting. <laughs> so and World Anvil has a list of the five best. This is number one. Like. So there, there's there's some ties. Interesting. I, I wonder I wonder if I'm if I will be able to log in uh, with World As a World Anvil member. That's I will possible. definitely have to check that out. But that go. is a dungeonfog.com and the software is DNG or DGN fog. Oh DGN. That makes more sense. My bad. I can't type as usual. Everyone already knows this. So that's it. That's what I've got for suggestions for map making software that I thought looked cool or good or very useful. It ranges from stuff that's going to take you seconds to draw a map to fully detailed tools that professionals use. 
that said, this list is in no way uh, inclusive. Like we we have not, it's it's not even close to extensive. Uh, these were just the ones that looked the best to me with a focus on ones that were free or free to use or at least offered free options that you could upgrade later. For a rather huge list of map making tools, I encourage you and actually anyone who's into dungeon cartography at all or fantasy cartography, go to the Cartographer's Guild. This is an old site. It's been around for a long time and it kind of reminds you what BGG used to look like. But this is the biggest online forum for RPG map makers. There, you can find a thread listing what's probably every piece of map making software out there. Now, I'll be tossing a link to that in the show notes. And Sean, if you could throw that into the chat, I do invite people to check that out. Uh, and just I just checked, I get 10% off the premium DGN Fog uh, membership with my World Anvil membership. There you go. So there you have our list of map making tools. I hope we were able to find something that works out for you, Nate, and that we help people in general discover some great mapping tools. Remember, if you've got a game or game night question for us, head over to the website and click on Ask the Bellhop.